Hi, I'm Marta Waller. I'm here with Dr. Richard W. Fleming, world-renowned plastic surgeon. Hi, Dr. Fleming. How are Hello. you? Hello. Let's talk about hairline lowering, a topic I find fascinating. A lot of people have very high hairlines. They're very unhappy with them, very frustrated. And I think that what you do is kind of almost like a magic trick. You lower the hairline and no one ever knows it's happened except the patient who's then happy. How do you do this? High hairlines are very, very common. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of us don't notice it, don't pay attention because women are very, very uh, innovative and they choose the right hairstyles, mm -hmm. they camouflage it, they hide it. So while it's a very common problem, it's not very often seen except by the lady who's sitting in front of the mirror every day, putting on her makeup or styling her hair or cutting her hair. So it, it's a large problem, um, very common. So describe the actual hairline lowering procedure. Well, remember, hair frames the face mm -hmm. in most people. Some of us are less fortunate, but for most people, hair will frame the face. Mm -hmm. uh, centuries ago, Leonardo da Vinci talked about facial proportions. Mm -hmm. And his description, his theories are still widely held today. I mean, it's basically the Bible of facial proportions. And he divided the face into three portions. From the chin to the bottom of the nose is one-third, to the brows is one-third, and then to the hairline is one-third. So in people that don't have the ideal proportion, which is very common as we said, the hairline is typically too high. Too low of a hairline is not distracting. A large forehead is unattractive. Uh, there's multiple reasons for it. Um, some people, it's just an inherited characteristic. They don't like it. They don't know anything can be done about it. For other people, unfortunately, it's a result of previous cosmetic surgery. Somebody has a facelift with poor incisions, poor placement of incisions. You can actually pull this temporal hairline back. Doesn't look good many times uh, we have to reconstruct that area after a poorly done facelift. Another cause of a high hairline is people who have had a brow lift or forehead lift, the hairline can be pulled up. People come in after cosmetic surgery wanting their hairline lowered again. So a large forehead is not a desirable feature. For most people, it's distracting. There's individuals like Vanessa Williams, who's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She has an extremely high hairline, but you don't notice it because you're, you're attracted to her eyes and the rest of her very positive physical features, facial features. So it's a very common problem. Question is, how do you correct it? That's the magic trick. How do you fix that? There's a couple of different theories, uh, a couple of different techniques. Some surgeons who I disagree with, just because of personal preference, choose to do hair transplants to lower that hairline. Mm -hmm. The problem with hair transplants is it's impossible to get normal uniform density and thickness as female hair usually is. In males, transplants can work, but they don't have the normal uniform thickness that a woman has. So it's very hard to duplicate that with transplants. The technique that we developed many years ago for lowering the hairline and improving facial proportions, what we're doing is we actually make an incision in the hairline, the existing hairline. Mm -hmm. Then what we'll do is we'll go behind that hairline up into the scalp, down deep, mobilize that scalp, and then advance it inferiorly, bringing it down to its proper location. Obviously, we're, we are removing bald skin below the existing hairline and then advancing the hairline down to, to close that, to eliminate that gap. At the completion of the procedure, what we do is we bury hair follicles under that skin closure. Those follicles will produce hair that will grow through and in front of that line. Therefore, 
after that hair grows out, the patient has total freedom of styling. They can comb their hair back, up, anything they want. So they don't lose anything in terms of their hairstyles or choices. What kind of time investment does a patient have in hairline lowering, start to finish, from surgery date on? Mm -hmm. It will take six weeks for the hair to grow through that line. But that's not a problem because nobody's going to see that. These women are used to covering their hairline. They've done it all their life. So they don't have to really change their normal styles. But once that hair grows through and in front, which can be um, six weeks, like I say, after the hairline lowering, nobody will know. and They have total freedom of, of how they style their hair. Well, that is truly an amazing way to solve a big problem for the women who hate their hairlines and uh, not a huge investment of time. So uh, until next time, I'm Marta Waller and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for joining us.